Hey YouTube friends, I've gotten tons of questions about knee cartilage repair. That's been one of our most popular videos here on YouTube. And um, I wanted to just go more in depth into exactly how cartilage can get repaired, some of the science behind it. And I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, but if you have questions, please comment on here below. We'll get to them as fast as we can. And um, I'd love to discuss more about cartilage repair and uh, the science behind it. Now, um, real quick, in case you don't know me, my name is Dr. David Midoff. I'm an expert physical therapist. I'm over in El Paso, Texas at a company called El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. And uh, we help people stay active, healthy, and mobile while avoiding unnecessary surgeries, injections, and medications. Um, so if you're ever considering getting help with a knee cartilage problem, uh, we're definitely the people to talk to. We help them all the time. So let me get into it here. Now, what we, we get tons of different variations of this question of exactly how does cartilage heal in knees? And there's different types of cartilage in a knee. The most common one that people are usually referring to is the one that's right behind the kneecap against the thigh bone. Let me get the skeleton here. The most common type of cartilage that's affected is the one that's right behind the kneecap and it interfaces with the thigh bone on the end of the thigh bone. That is covered with cartilage right there and then this is covered with cartilage on the end of the thigh bone. Now the other type of cartilage that's most commonly talked about is the meniscus tissue that's it sits between the, the shin bone, the tibia, and the, the thigh bone, the femur. So between those two bones, there's big chunks of cartilage that can get torn or, or um, worn down is another word for it. And then on the back of the, the patella, the kneecap here, and on the front of the, at the end of the thigh bone, the, the femur, you've also got cartilage that gets worn down. Now the way that this heals, it doesn't necessarily re regenerate. If we're being specific with the terms to use here, Tissue regeneration is an experimental thing that isn't really proven yet. As far as generating 100% brand new cartilage cells to replace the ones that have been um, injured or affected somehow, that is where the stem cell research is going. Um, there's also other regenerative medicine techniques out there. Uh, PRP is another one. There's, uh, I think, Synvisc is another There's tons of, of uh, pharmaceutical companies going into cartilage regeneration medicine. And what we do here in the clinic is not that. What we're interested in, in here is healing cartilage that's injured or torn. When healing happens, you get scar tissue development. Let me make a simple analogy that I'm sure you'll be able to follow. If you've ever gotten a cut or a scrape, you don't really need your skin to regenerate. Regeneration is more like how a lizard, if you're familiar with this, um, if a lizard loses a limb, like a finger or even an arm or a tail, it can grow it back. It regenerates a brand new limb. We don't do that as humans. We can't regenerate tissue, but we can heal tissue. Just like if you get a cut on your skin, if you were to cut open your arm here, give it a couple of weeks and you'll fill it in with scar tissue and you're good to go. Your skin is just fine. But if you chop off a finger or a hand, it's not, it's not going to grow back. You're going to get scar tissue on the end of the, the wound, wherever, you know, wherever the incision happened or, or injury happened, and you'll be fine still. Um, you know, you got to deal with the loss of a finger or a hand, but your skin will close up and you won't leak blood all over the place and you'll be able to tolerate using that arm in its new capacity. In cartilage, in the knee, if you think about damaged cartilage, having scar tissue cartilage, because you'd make scar tissue in all different varieties. You make skin scar tissue, you can make cartilage scar tissue, you can make muscle scar tissue, uh, ligament, tendon scar tissue. If you can generate scar tissue on your cartilage, then you've got an excellent shot at regaining some cushion, regaining some motion in your knee, uh, reducing the popping and clicking, definitely reducing the discomfort and pain. And most importantly, this translates to you being able to walk better, kneel, squat, exercise better, and just live your life. Be with family, be with friends, enjoy your kids, enjoy your grandkids, and, and without worrying that you're gonna end up having to replace a knee or have some surgery later on in life. Now the cool thing about cartilage tissue, when you get scar tissue on your cartilage tissue, that tissue is shown to be about 70 to 80% as 
durable, as strong as the original tissue. That's not bad. I'll take that. Especially compared to an experimental regenerative medicine situation, which I'm not against. I'm not saying don't do that. If you have the means and the desire to go do stem cells in your knee, by all means, give it a shot. I've heard mixed results. Some people think it's great. Some people say it didn't work. It just depends on your situation. Um, I think that that's, that's good. But if you can fix the mechanics, if you can take pressure off where you got your cartilage worn down and allow the cartilage to heal, which happens naturally just like your skin heals as long as you take off the pressures in the area, which some therapy and exercise is required to do that, um, then you can get that 70 to 80% cushion, the cartilage, restored so that you can get back to walking as long as you want or standing as long as you want or even just being able to sleep at night because your knee isn't bothering you so much. So the way that we take pressures off the knee is by affecting the muscle imbalances. Typically, people that have worn down cartilage in their knees, whether it's on the cartilage on the kneecap or the end of the bone or in the meniscus, they've got some massive muscle imbalance. The most common muscle imbalance that we see is on the quads. The quads are way too strong. The muscles in the front of the thigh that all attach to the kneecap. When those quads are really strong and dominant, they push that kneecap up against the thigh bone and sometimes they pull it off to the side so that it doesn't track properly on itself and that can wear down that cartilage faster over time. The other thing that it does down on the meniscus is because that all the quad muscles that attach to this uh, uh, kneecap here, there's a tendon that connects the kneecap down to the shin bone. Well, it also compresses the joint and, and makes the joint move in a non-natural way. It's not the, the way that it's supposed to occur there. The mechanics are off. That changes the way that the forces are put onto the meniscus and over time, it wears the meniscus as well. Now, all this stuff happens over time. That's why you don't see kids with osteoarthritis or meniscus tears. You only see meniscus injuries in kids that have some sort of traumatic sport injury, like a volleyball, basketball, football injury. But the ones that aren't traumatic, the ones that occur with age, if you will, are people that are in their 50s and 60s and beyond. And that's just because they've been dealing with this muscle imbalance for so long that it's kind of catching up to them. They've been wearing down their cartilage over time, and now when they've hit 65, it's really torn or it's really beginning to grind on itself. But it's still possible to heal that cartilage and fill it in with, with healthy scar tissue to offload the joint some and then fix the muscle imbalance so that it's not putting negative pressures on that knee as you go on in life. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this could be an answer to a lot of the comments, a lot of the questions we had out there. If you're dealing with a knee problem, go check out our other videos on, knee, on knees and find some exercises that you can start to do to fix this muscle imbalance, to take pressure off that cartilage so that you can be healthy and active and mobile and avoid an unnecessary surgery, injections, and medication. Have a wonderful day, YouTube friends. Oh, I almost forgot. Please hit the like button here if this video was helpful for you and hit the subscribe button right over there so that you can get notified whenever we release helpful information for your knees and for your overall health. Thanks guys, have a wonderful day, bye-bye.